guys, thanks for stopping by. I'm really excited to tell you guys about this story, but first I had a few things I wanted to talk about. Um, first, just in case you guys didn't know, I'm on Instagram. If you want, you can follow me here. Um, it's Bring Me to Koalas, and you can also follow me on Twitch here at just Bring Me to Koala. Um, I haven't decided on my schedule yet for streaming, but I will let you guys know as soon as it starts getting a little bit more kind of underway. <laughs> and also, I've been super appreciative of all of the support you guys have been giving me lately. If you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe. And if you're not new here, don't forget to like and comment below. And let's get into this story. Nothing too crazy, truthfully, but it's kind of the story how my doctor unintentionally tried to kill me. So just a few things to preface it so it makes a little more sense to you guys. I've been struggling with my mental health for a really long time. Um, I've struggled with depression and anxiety pretty much for closer to 10 or 11 years now, um, but I didn't really reach out for help until the first time when this appointment took place. I also have had on and off back problems all my life. Um, nothing crazy difficult or crazy major until um, the more recent years, until at this appointment pretty much. Prior to this appointment, I had a prescription um, for birth control. I was taking a daily oral contraceptives and it had been okay. Um, I just, I needed a refill for it and that was the biggest driving factor for the appointment is that I needed to um, kind of have a new prescription set up with my new doctor. So, setting the timeline a little bit, it's early 2019. Um, I had some pretty major back problems. Like there was about two weeks that I had some severe back pain. Um, you know, as a 19 year old, it's not totally normal. I figured I maybe just hurt myself on accident somehow, but I didn't think too much of it. There were a couple days where I couldn't really walk, which is not a good sign at all. <laughs> but um, I kind of ignored it, unfortunately. I really should have gone to the doctor at that time um, and talked about my back pains, but I didn't. So, hindsight's 2020. Um, I had eventually gone to the doctor later that year, <laughs> later that year, um, to kind of talk with my doctor about my mental health, birth control, and my back pains. So, uh, my doctor, his, I'm gonna call him Dr. V, was super dismissive to my problem, so I had talked with him about wanting birth control, and it was just such a bizarre conversation that I had with him about it. Um, you know, I had already been on birth control at this point, so it didn't make sense to me as to why um, some of these questions were being asked. He had asked, like, why I wanted to be on birth control, and I told him that, you know, I figured, you know, I'm 19 years old at the time, and I'm not ready for a child at all. Um, and that one of my other issues is that I have some mental health problems that I don't feel would make me an adequate parent at the time. And so after kind of mentioning the mental health problems, he started to like get on to me almost and was like, well, why didn't you talk about that first? Why did you talk about birth control first? And I was like, well, was the, you know, I was trying to save it for a little bit later after I got to feel you know, kind of feel how my relationship with this doctor was going to be a little bit more. He had kind of made some accusing questions like, why don't you want to have kids with your husband? Is it because you're depressed? Does he make you depressed? And does he ever do anything to make you sad? Or does he try to abuse you? And I was like, so just, oh my God, like, is this guy serious? It was crazy to me because, you know, I, I've never met this man before and I had just told him I've been struggling a little bit with my mental health and I just wanted to figure out what would be the best course of action for me to take. And I'm just like blown away by that. That was what my, that's what Dr. V felt that he should steer that conversation in the direction of. And so I do understand, of course, he wants to make sure I'm safe, but he went about it in like the wrong way. It was, you know, it's a super sensitive discussion to have and he just kind of made me feel bad about it. Um, so he really upset me when I started to discuss the issues with my mental health and kind of go into all of that. He was like, you know, of course, asking if we have, if I had a family history of mental health problems or anything like that, and if I didn't know, he was like, well, why won't you know that? Why don't you know that? Are you homesick? Do you miss your family? Maybe you should just go home. Maybe you should leave your husband and, you know, go home for a while. And I was like, Dude, it was crazy. <laughs> um, it was not an appointment that I wanted to have or 
really an appointment that should have happened the way it did at all. And I'm really sad that it happened the way it did. Kind of continuing on, after kind of discussing all of that, he did suggest I take uh, start taking antidepressants. And so I was going to be doing that um, after the appointment, all of that good stuff. Um, so because I was so upset, I kind of forgot to mention the back pain because that was just a couple months prior that it was still kind of bright in my mind. It was something pretty serious to me. And so I had told him about it and he was like, oh, well, I want you to lose weight first and then we can talk about it. And I was really taken aback by that. I was like, well, is there like, can I go to a chiropractor or anything? Just because, you know, my back pain is really difficult to deal with sometimes. And I don't know how to keep going about it because it, it physically hurts that I can't get active sometimes. And he was like, yeah, I know not for spouses. Um, we don't cover that. So just lose some weight and we'll talk about your back pain again if you still have it. And I was like, okay. And he kind of sent me on my way to the pharmacy to go pick up the antidepressants after we just had to talk about my mental health and to pick up birth control. It was just really crazy to me. Um, but after some time, someone had made a recommendation to me about a different doctor um, at a different hospital, and I figured, you know what, hey, why not? I'll give it a shot. Just because, you know, it. this was almost a year and a half later that I decided to go to the doctor again. I had stopped taking antidepressants, and I was really tired of taking a oral contraceptive pill every single day. Mind you, at this point, I had been taking the pill for closer to three years now, and I was just really tired of it, honestly. So I decided I wanted to talk with another doctor about birth control options because I still wasn't ready. I'm still not ready, but I just didn't want to talk with Dr. V about it again. So I eventually had this appointment with our new doctor. His name is Dr. S. Dr. S was super helpful and actually really receptive to all of my problems. I had I had stated to him like from the get-go, hey, you know, I'm, I'm gonna tell you what my problems are. I understand what my weight might be a problem. You know, I've got problems that I'm dealing with now. These are problems when I was a lighter weight. So sure, it may be worse because of my weight, but it's not just because of my weight. And it felt really bad having to explain and apologize to a doctor to say like, I'm sorry, I'm overweight, but here's my issue. And he apologized. Dr. S was completely understanding. He apologized a lot for the actions and kind of responses that Dr. V had had. And Dr. S actually suggested that I go to get x-rays done that same day. So we had actually made two decisions that day. One, I was going to get x-rays that day um, after my appointment. And then the other is I switched my birth control. So I switched it to um, the arm implants called Nexplanon. So I had gotten an x-ray done and I had gotten a new birth control implant put in. A couple days later after that first appointment, I started to have some serious back pain again. And it was almost as bad as the very first time in 2019 that I had this back pain. It was manageable, but there were some days that it, it was agonizing. I had actually called my doctor right away and he was super responsive and really helpful. Um, and he actually had called me, it was like maybe three days later saying that the x-ray actually didn't show anything. Being that I started to have all this sudden back pain, he really wanted me to get an MRI done. And I was like, okay, kind of scary, but sure, I'll do it. Just because I'm in a lot of pain at this time. <laughs> it was really painful to walk. Um, and I actually just had like the worst time at work. And it was just not very cash money at the time. I'm gonna be completely honest. So fast forward, maybe like a week or so later, um, I had my MRI. I had my MRI at like four in the morning and it was super exhausting because I had to work later that day. It was a really weird experience getting into an MRI machine. If you've never been in one, it is so loud. And I had to sit like super still for like 10 minutes. And so maybe a week or two later, he called me saying, hey, we just got the information from your MRI back and you actually have a herniated disc in your lower back. You've probably had this herniated disc for some time now, but it just only flares up every now and then. I was like, oh, that would make a lot of sense. Like, wow, I'm almost 21 years old. I'm not even 21 years old and I have a herniated disc. Oh my God, like what is wrong with me? I felt really bad about it. <laughs> so after Dr. S told me that I actually had a herniated disc. He said, on the MRI, we actually saw that you have a mass in your pelvic region. And I was like, you know, my, my stomach dropped and my heart, like it just sank. I was like, oh my God. 
because I, I was literally like on my way to work, like 30 minutes I was gonna be going to work. I asked, do you know if it's a tumor or if it's like something I should be concerned about? He said that because of the MRI imaging and because of what type of tumor it probably was, that it wasn't gonna come out in super good quality. And so he wanted me to get, he wanted me to have ultrasound imaging done on it. It was really tough kind of just absorbing that information. Like, okay. All right, well, thank you for telling me I have a herniated disc and a tumor. He said someone would call me to set up an appointment for the ultrasound and I was like, just blown away, honestly. <laughs> um, and so someone called me maybe a couple days later. I had taken a day off of work that day just because it was it was really difficult to deal with that news just really suddenly and I was like, wow, okay, um, crazy. <laughs> So someone had called me a little bit later and they were like, hey, so, you know, we're gonna get this appointment set up. And they set the appointment up for like 4.30 in the morning. Dude, let me tell you, that was not the move because I had to work later that day too. So I'm super thankful to the entire care team that I had after switching hospitals and starting to work with Dr. S on everything. And it kind of gave me a second to reflect that the only reason I even knew I had this tumor was because Dr. S had told me to get an MRI to check out what's going on with that back pain that I had mentioned to Dr. V. If I had just kind of let Dr. V's entire like idea of, oh, well, you just need to lose weight, I might have like had this tumor for a lot longer and not known about it. Fast forward a couple weeks, we find out that the tumor from the, um, MRI after doing the ultrasound imaging was actually seven centimeters and we weren't sure if it had grown or if it was just poor quality image on the MRI. Obviously seven centimeters is pretty scary. And to kind of put that in perspective, seven centimeters is closer to the size of like a peach. So the tumor was on my left ovary. I was at risk of something called ovarian tersion. And just for you, so you don't have to Google what that is, pretty much because of the weight that the tumor was putting on my ovary, doing any kind of activity could have potentially flipped my ovary and twisted the fallopian tube leading from my ovary to my uterus. It was really crazy to kind of think about it because like, you know, if I had just taken that advice of Dr. V, started working out more, going running, doing more like intense activity, I could have flipped that ovary and potentially died. And I was like, whack <laughs> honestly i know that's like a pretty underwhelming <laughs> response and kind of reaction to it but looking back on it i'm not too worried about it now i actually ended up having a surgery later that year so around july of 2021 i had a surgery to remove the mass and fortunately it was not cancerous or anything bad which was super fortunate um, so I'm really blessed that I had gotten switched over to this new care team and I'm really glad that I'm there and Really thankful that I'm not with Dr. V anymore because potentially it could have killed me um, Just because he didn't really want to look into it Crazy to think about how the world kind of works in all of these ways <laughs> Thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end of the story Don't forget to like and subscribe and be safe be kind and we'll see you guys next time. Bye I burned my tongue earlier today. I was having cup ramen and it was just really dumb how the whole situation went. I had poured boiling water into this cup, let it sit for a couple minutes. And then after the noodles were done, I was like, oh, okay, so I'm gonna look at it. And I looked at the label and it said to like sip and enjoy. And I was like, oh, you know what? I've never sipped cup ramen before. I've always just eaten it with a fork. So I took the lid off all the way and I took a sip of it, not thinking about the fact that I had just poured boiling water in this not even three minutes ago. And I was like, Oh my god, my tongue hurts so much and it hurts a lot now. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna be able to taste things right for the next couple days. Kind of bummer. <laughs>